The Sony FX3 is one of our favourite small form factor cameras on the market currently, but there are a few things that are wrong or missing from the FX3 to make it almost perfect for video productions. So we thought we'd put together a little video talking through how you can resolve these problems and what accessories you need to do so. So let's get into it. Now these recommendations are mainly for the FX3, but lots of them will also be applicable to the A7S3. But let's start off talking about rigging. There are now cage options on the market for the FX3, and a solid cage could be needed for certain configurations. And for the A7S3, it's really a must have. We are expecting a small rig unit soon, but we finally have the 8SIN cage in to have a look at right now. After messing around a little bit with it and configuring a few different setups, there are a few things worth mentioning. Our Sigma 24-70 does not mount onto the camera nicely with the cage attached. The barrel of the lens hits the bit of metal that overhangs at the top of the cage. A fix for this would be to sand this bit of metal down. Our Metabone Cine also doesn't fit at all. It seems like 8SIN have designed it within Sony's G Master specs, as it fits the 16-35, 24-70 and 7200 no problem. The Sigma MT11 also fits fine. You can mount the included top handle, which is also really good to see. These are all the lenses we've managed to test this cage with currently, but of course there's probably going to be some more that don't work with this one. And as we update it, I'll put some details in the description below as and when we get around to testing more lenses with it. I've seen people say, why would I need a cage with the FX3? It has one built in. Well, there's a few reasons why. First off, the camera only has a single thread on the bottom, which means when attaching it to accessories like a tripod plate, means that the camera ends up spinning on that single thread. Especially if you move or carry the tripod with the camera attached to it still, which we are all guilty of sometimes. The rest of the quarter inch threads are also not in great positions. The top two here are used by the top handle, which only leaves this one on top of the camera. On the left, you only have one and it's just above the HDMI port, which limits what you can mount here if you're using a monitor. And on the right, you have the last quarter inch on the body at the top of the grip. Now these quarter inches on the camera body also don't feature any locating pins. So mounting something like a monitor on a Nogra arm will eventually result in the monitor spinning, which nobody wants. So if these limited quarter inch threads are going to provide you with the mounting points you need to rig your camera up, it will be down to you but a cage will solve a lot of the issues we've just mentioned. I really like the look of Smorig's half cage for the FX3. It looks to be the most versatile solution out of the bunch. Another big reason to pick up a cage for these cameras is if you are using wider, bigger G Master lenses, as these can be difficult to mount onto tripods because the barrel of the lens will often go lower than the base of the camera. This means when you're trying to mount it onto the tripod plate, it will end up hitting the plate before you can mount it on. Having a cage which adds height to the camera fixes this. As well as cages, there are a range of other really little handy accessories for the FX3 that are worth looking at. Smorig make their 1421, which is a quarter inch cold shoe adapter, which you'll be able to mount straight onto the camera. These are also so cheap, I would just grab a couple and have them in your kit bag in case you ever need them, to be honest. They really will be fantastic to use the FX3 to mount any range of accessories onto the camera body. We also really like the Kipatai smart cable wraps, which are bongo ties with a twist. The ability to be mounted to a quarter inch thread. And this means that you can mount lightweight accessories in a pinch or tie cables up really neatly. The FX3 comes with a fantastic top handle that features a very similar audio module to the XLR K3M, which was designed for the latest generation of Alpha series cameras. Though this audio unit is great to have, it's worth thinking about what audio solutions you are going to be using it with as if you are using a more traditional wireless lav system, you may struggle mounting them somewhere nicely. Sennheiser's AVX system is great for this as it mounts directly into the XLR port without needing to mount the pack. One solution I can see being very popular with the FX3 is the Rode Wireless Go 2. As for its price, it provides a lot of bang for its buck. However, if you want to use it with the FX3 top handle, you'll need to either plug it into the 3.5mm input on the audio module or use a 3.5mm to XLR adapter such as the Rode VXLR to adapt it. Because the Wireless Go 2 is so small and light, mounting it will be relatively easy. The best solution I can think would be to mount it to a cold shoe using the clip on the back of the receiver. You can use the Smorig 1241 that we mentioned earlier on the side of the body to do this, as there isn't really anywhere else left to mount it. If you're planning on using your FX3 with other larger cameras, you may want to sync your cameras using some kind of timecode solution. 
One really nice solution for the FX3 is Tentacle's ecosystem. They offer both the Sync E and Track E. The Sync E is great for syncing across different camera systems, and the Track E is an awesome 32 bit flow audio recorder that you can sync with the Sync E units. This is a really nice compact solution, and mounting the Sync E on camera or the Track E on talent will be pretty easy because they are incredibly light and feature internal batteries. You can easily mount it on top of the XLR unit using some kind of sturdy Velcro, or if you want a more robust solution, Tentacle make a bracket which mounts directly onto a quarter 20 thread. I can see this being the best solution for most people wanting to mount this on camera, but Tentacle also makes two different quick release kits, a V-mount quick release version and cold shoe mount version. One difference between the FX3's audio module and the K3M is that the K3M comes with a Sony ECM-XM1, short shotgun microphone to use with your camera. However, the FX3 does not, so if you are wanting to run a shotgun microphone with it, you'll need to pick one up. The ECM XM1 isn't readily available, so our go to recommendation is the Rode VideoMic NTG or the Deity VMic D3 Pro. Both of these mics come with a standard 3.5mm cable, so you'll need to grab a Rode VXLR adapter to plug it into one of the XLR ports. You'll also need to grab a Sony microphone spacer if you're going to pick up a shotgun microphone that isn't from Sony. Without this, shotgun mics will wobble around in the shock mount. Links to everything are down in the description below. One of the features we really wanted to see in the FX3 was the addition of the same internal ND system as the FX6 and FX9, but unfortunately we didn't. So a good ND system is an absolute must. There are only a few E-mount ND systems on the market, but their autofocus performance leaves a lot to be desired. So until Sony or maybe even Sigma plug this hole in the market, our go-to recommendation is the Revo ring. This simple accessory is essentially a variable step up ring that you can mount any filter to and then quickly switch it between your different lenses. This is available with either an ND filter built in or without so you can use your own filters, the latter being what I recommend as it's much more flexible and allows you to use any filter you'd like. We've used the built in ND filter version a bunch on several shoots and I've been impressed with the quality of the ND and the adapter system itself. The back LCD is definitely handy and the ability to use it for touch control and focus is really useful, though it does lack brightness in bright lighting conditions. One of the downsides of the FX3 in my opinion is the limited exposure tools. Unlike the rest of the cinema line, the FX3 does not have a waveform and also doesn't have false colour, which given its cinema classification is a bit frustrating. One way around this is to use an external monitor which does feature these tools, such as the Atomos Ninja 5. This can mount really nicely with the correct accessory, such as using the Smorig half cage you mentioned earlier with a monitor mount. Smorig also make a HDMI protector, which will be a great purchase if you run a monitor on your rig a lot. The FX3 shares so much of the A7S III. One thing it doesn't is its EVF. An EVF can be really handy in certain lighting conditions, so if you do want one for the FX3, there aren't any really small options on the market currently. I would love to see Sony release some kind of compact EVF that can be mounted off the camera body like what is now possible with the Blackmagic 6K Pro and their EVF and Tilter's new extension and mounting kit for it. This is one area of the market that really does lack competition currently, but there are a few options such as the Portkey's Li, which is probably the best balance of cost and performance on the market. If you want a more kind of traditional EVF solution, you're then looking at the £1,000 plus price point with the need to then power it and mount it very differently. Let us know if you have any questions about these EVFs in the comments below. The MPFZ100 batteries that the FX3 uses are pretty great and do last a decent amount of runtime. However, they do limit what they can break out to, and this means that power accessories such as Anton Bauer's Titan base kit or a more complex rig with a VLOC plate could be a really nice option for powering your entire system. Adding a larger battery source not only means you can power the camera and accessories all from one battery, but it also adds weight. And this is important as adding weight to a nice solid rig will make your handheld footage look so much smoother. We haven't mentioned lenses, but we recently did a video looking at several general purpose E-mount zoom options from Sigma and Sony, and compared them to an adapted Canon zoom to see the differences when it comes to performance and autofocus. You can check that video out here. If you're looking at using more cinema orientated lenses, you really need to make sure that you lock your lens down as much as possible, as the E-mount used on the FX3 will have some play in the mount which can result in image shift when focusing or zooming, which really doesn't look very good. The FX3 is an awesome camera, and the improvements we have spoken about in this video could make using the camera even better for you on your next production. 
Though, if you are looking at picking up an FX3, I would really suggest getting in contact with us so we can properly recommend all the kit you may need for it. Let us know how you've rigged up your FX3 down in the comments below. And to stay up to date with our upcoming content, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And thank you so much for watching.